Hey, this is John. Before we get started, please do us a small favor and like the video and subscribe to the channel. If we can get to a thousand subscribers, we can help fund free lessons for students and affordable instruments for those students. If that's something you think you'd like to know more about, please check out our Patreon in the links below. Thanks and enjoy the video. Hey everybody, thanks for checking out the video. What I wanna do here in this video is give you a real quick how to get started making some sounds out of your acoustic guitar. Just a real simple lesson. Get your fingers moving and enjoy making some music. All right, let's get started real quick with all the parts of the guitar. Up at the top here, we have the headstock. On the headstock, you'll kinda of have six tuners, three on each side. Some guitars will have six on one side, uh, but this particular one has three. It's about the most common. The next thing you have here is the nut. It's a small sort of piece of hard material that supports the strings as they go a uh, transition from the neck to the tuners. Further down, you have these pieces of metal. Those are called the frets. Um, if somebody were to tell you to play the first fret on the first string, you would actually put your finger in this position here, you'd put it right between the nut and the first fret, and preferably close to the fret. If you put your finger on the fret, you get kind of a dull sound, but if you put it just behind the nut, you're gonna get a nice sound that rings out. So this would be like the first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, etc., all the way down. Now on the neck, you see some, some markers. This particular guitar has a marker on the 5th, 7th, 9th, 12th, then 15th fret. Uh, you'll notice there's double markers on the 12th fret. Many guitar companies will have a sort of special marker or double marker on that particular fret just to show you where you are on the guitar when you're playing. Next, we're gonna move over to the body of the guitar. This would be called the top, the sides, and the back, pretty straightforward. Uh, we've got the sound hole, the pick guard here to keep the top from getting scratched up, and then we have the bridge. Uh, on the bridge, you'll see little end pins. Those will uh, uh, secure the guitar strings to the bridge, so they would pop out and you could restring it through there. Um, also on this guitar, we do have some electronics. Um, you don't need electronics to get started, but some controls right there. And then on the back of the guitar, we've got a strap jack, uh, which holds onto the strap, and you can actually plug into it if we were to use the pickup. Um, this particular guitar doesn't have a, an end pin anywhere on here uh, to attach a strap, so I've actually just sort of I've got it tied on right up here. Uh, both ways are fine, totally correct. Now, let's go over the string names real quick. From low to high, it's E, A, D, G, B, E. Eddie ate dynamite, good by Eddie. For the purpose of this lesson, you don't really need to know the string names, but, uh, but do be aware of them as we go through it. Um, the low strings are up at the top here, which may seem sort of counterintuitive, but the low strings will have the lower pitch. Um, the thicker strings will give you that lower sound, as opposed to a higher string. So from low to high, you can hear the difference. Uh, the top string is also the sixth string, and the bottom string here is actually the first string. Again, maybe a little counterintuitive, but just know six is low, one is high. So this first chord is going to be focusing on the, the three high strings, so strings one, two, and three. This first chord is called G. So we're going to take our first finger, and we're going to put it right here on the first string third fret, and we're gonna play the three high strings. We're gonna play G, B, and E. So take your pick, sort of like an extension of your first finger and you're holding it between your thumb and your first finger. And we're just gonna, just gonna strum those top three strings. And that's a G. So again, first finger, first string, third fret, and then 
just those three strings. So the next chord I'm gonna show you, we're gonna take that same first finger and we're gonna move it down two frets. So you're gonna put the first finger on the first string on the first fret. And we're gonna play the same three strings. And that's a G7 chord. First finger, first string, first fret, one, one, one. And that's G7. Now let's take that same finger and we're gonna move it over one string. So the first finger is gonna be on the second string, first fret. And you're gonna play the same three strings. And this will be a C chord. Again, first finger, second string, first fret. And that's a C chord. So let's run all those all together. G, G7, and then to C. Let's look at some two finger chords. The first one we're gonna look at is E minor. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our second finger, put it on the fifth string second fret, and our ring finger, our third finger, on the fourth string second fret. Again, second finger, fifth string second fret, third finger, fourth string second fret. And with this particular chord, we can play all the strings. So with your pick in your hand, just go ahead and play all six strings. Let's look at the next chord, which is A suspended second. So we're gonna take that position that we had for E minor, and we're gonna drop everything down one string. So you're gonna have your second finger on the fourth string second fret, and your third finger, your ring finger, on the third string second fret. And this will be an A suspended second chord. But the only difference between this and the E minor in terms of the strings that we play is we're only gonna play the fifth string through the first string. So skip over the E string, the sixth string, the low string, and play everything else below it. All right, let's look at two more chords before we wrap this up into a finger exercise. We're gonna look at another two note chord, or two finger chord. Uh, so we're gonna use our third finger, our ring finger, on the fifth string, third fret, and we're gonna use our second finger on the fourth string, second fret. Now, this might be a little challenging at first, but uh, after repeated tries, I'm sure you'll get it. Sometimes people will kind of like lay their, lay their hands flat like this, uh, but what you wanna do is try to keep those fingers arched. You should, uh, you should be able to put a pen, a pen underneath it almost. So let's try this. It's gonna be third finger, fifth string, third, uh, third fret, and second finger, fourth string, second fret, and this is gonna be a C major seven chord. And you're playing, you're playing from five all the way down. All right, let's do one more chord. We're gonna take that exact same shape that our fingers are in now, and we're gonna drop it down one more string, just like we did between the E minor and A minor chord. So we're dropping it down one string. You'll have your third finger, on the fourth string third fret, and your second finger on the third string second fret. Now this time we're only gonna play the four uh, high strings. So it'll be four, three, two, one. Take your pick. And that is an F major seven flat fifth. It's a fancy name. It's a real nice sounding chord. So let's listen to those back to back and we're, you're gonna watch the transition. So from C major seven to F major seven flat five. Now the names are not all that important right now. You're just kind of getting started, you know, building your finger strength and getting down some uh, patterns. Now let's go through all the chords we just learned. We're gonna start with the G and then a G seven and then a C and then an E minor, A suspended second, C major seven, and F major seven flat five.
Now that I've shown you a few chords, let's go ahead and do some finger exercises just to get those fingers moving on the fretboard. We're gonna take our first finger, our second finger, third finger, and fourth finger, and we're gonna play them in ascending order. So starting at the first finger, we're gonna do the first string, first fret, then second finger, second fret, third finger, third fret, and then fourth finger, fourth fret. So all together. And I want you to try that on different strings in different positions. So you're just you're gonna be doing one, two, three, four. So up higher, you could try it. Or down on the lower strings, might be a little harder to get that reach and keep those fingers arched. All right, so we've gone through a couple of chords and I've shown you a finger exercise. Let's talk about a couple of things that you might wanna get with your acoustic guitar. First thing you're gonna need is picks. Gotta have one of these. Try some different shapes and sizes to see which one you really like. Next thing I'm gonna recommend is a tuner. This particular one is a clip-on tuner that goes on the headstock. We'll tune the guitar, uh, but they do make apps that you can download from Android or Apple's App Store. Um, those work great, they're usually free. Fender makes one, Gibson make one. There's a bunch of different uh, brands. Most of those apps will also have a metronome. Uh, a metronome on it uh, is really good for practicing and keeping in time. You know, a metronome is that click, 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 click. And when you're practicing, you know, you start slower and then you speed up as you go, always trying to be as precise as you can. So if you're changing between chords, you could start it at say 60 beats per minute uh, so you have plenty of time to switch your fingers between those chords. So a metronome, I think, is an absolute must. Uh, another fun thing to get would be a capo. Capo uh, goes on the neck of the guitar, and it actually shortens the length of the string. So normally, on this particular guitar, you'd have the string going from here to the, the bridge to the nut, but if you put a capo on it, it shortens that, that distance and actually raises the pitch. Um, and a, a nice trick is you can actually take those same chords we just learned uh, and still use the sort of shapes in the same kind of places. So you could do... So same patterns, same chords, but in a different position. Another thing I'd recommend is a guitar strap. Uh, a nice comfortable guitar strap is great. It helps you keep the guitar in the same position when you're playing all the time. Uh, another good thing to get for the acoustic guitar is a peg winder. Uh, this will help you tune the guitar quickly. Um, and also on the, the bottom of this one, see that little notch cut out? That'll help you take the end pins out of the bridge so you can change the uh, strings a little bit easier. And speaking of strings, you're gonna need a set of strings because you will break them. All right, let's talk about uh, cases real quick. Um, cases, there's essentially three different types. There is the real cheap chipboard case. It's almost cardboard, has a little vinyl covering on it. Those are usually pretty cheap. Um, a lot of times those will come with the actual guitar that, when you get it. Um, if you're gonna be traveling around like on an airplanes and stuff, uh, I would get a hard case. Hard cases are gonna be a bit more. They're probably in the $100 range at least. Um, but if you're just running over to your friend's house, you want to get something like a gig bag. So $40, $50, you can get a nice gig bag. Um, and if, as long as we're talking about keeping your guitar safe, I'd recommend getting a guitar stand. So when it's not in the case, uh, but you want it sitting out so you'll practice, uh, a, nice, a nice guitar stand is a really good thing to have. Let's talk about practice real quick. In the beginning, I recommend spending five or 10 minutes a day with the guitar. And then over time, that will grow as you're growing with your instrument. So if the fingers hurt at first, don't worry about it, just take a break, uh, but just keep coming back to it and over time you'll get some calluses on your fingers and you won't even notice it anymore. So in the notes below I'll have links to my website and to the Patreon where you can help us support beginning students by providing free lessons and affordable instruments. If you have any questions or if there's a topic you'd like me to cover, please leave them in the notes below. Stick with it, have fun, and we'll see you in the next lesson.